Welcome back to the shop guys. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company and this week we're going to build a computer stand. Now I bought a 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro and I use it for my SketchUp 3D design, editing an iMovie, some uh, photo editing and when I really get going on the computer it heats up the processor because it sits so low and it heats up the table which slows the computer down I have to step away from it and let the computer catch up and cool down so this is the kind of system that I have kind of going on right now this is my workstation out here and this guy slides in and out and so I prop it up on this three-quarter inch ledge and work now when I'm really cruising along, it's humming away and it really heats up the table. And that reflection of heat back up to the computer slows the computer down. So my idea is to build a cool stand that will elevate this up. Also, I'll kind of help me from keeping my neck down. I'll put a little higher so I'm looking more forward and not so down at the computer. And then it'll allow air to flow in here and that heat reflection will be two or three inches up. And I think that should curve the problem or at least help the problem. So that's the video for this week. So let's get in the design zone and design it. Come on in guys. Woo. All right, so we have a bunch of the leftover quarter inch alder from the logo transfer video that we are still working on that didn't work out very well so we're going to use this up so we want to use everything in the sh in the shop so my plan here is is to measure the macbook and then lay out a piece maybe two and a half three inches up for the back piece then i'll run a dado down like so and that's what the sides will fit in too then i'll take the side piece here and i'll run that same dado in the back and then I'll 45 it and what that's gonna do it'll sit down in there and the MacBook will sit up there on there and rest it and then in the back we can either drill some holes with the Forstner bit or we could just kind of hog it out and let the air pass through we just want to get as much airflow underneath here as we can and we want it to look nice and we want it to be functional we want it to be portable so that is the video for this week stick around till the end i'll have some you know, some easter eggs in this video i'll point out at the end if you're if you're a subscriber you'll kind of get that and you know let's have some fun i'm stoner erickson from erickson design company let's build something First step here was we're just going to measure the back of the MacBook Pro. And I want to really focus on measuring it around these feet because they're going to really stabilize it on the stand. So I settled at 11 and a half for the backs and seven and a half for the sides by three and a quarter inches rough. Now I'm going to take some blue tape and some CA glue and I'm going to glue the two pieces together so that they mirror each other. That way I can make two of these at the same time as I would make one. Now I ran out of CA glue here, so I decided to switch to a double-sided 3M tape. It's a gummy tape, so it actually really gums up on the saw, but this is all I had in the shop, but so it'll work. Now that they're glued up together, I'm gonna to slice them at three and an eighth and then three and a quarter and so that everything is the same size. Next I'm going to take the crosscut sled and I'm going to notch out the actual groove. It's just going to be a half inch over on the sides and a quarter inch thick 
and one inch over on the back and a quarter inch thick by one and a half. I'm just going to line this up actually with the saw blade on the crosscut sled and I'm just going to gently pass it through. I'm going to mark the 45 degree cut and I'm just going to do this with the uh, jigsaw here. I if I was making a production side of this, I'd set up a jig on the bandsaw, but since we're just making two, I'll just zip it through. Then I'm going to run over to the sander and just sand them both to the same height. I'll round over the front edge and that'll actually bring it to seven and a quarter. And I'll just give it a quick sand. With that done, I'm going to take a piece of half inch stock I have around the area and I'm just going to mark where I don't want to cut off. I think I want to leave about a half inch just for strength and dexterity here. Now I'm going to take my largest Forstner bit, which is one inch, and I'm just going to drill out both of the ends of the back and then take a piece of wood to connect them. I'll grab the jigsaw here and I'll just connect them. This is gonna give a ton of airflow through the back. I was just gonna do a bunch of Forstner holes, but this is like full airflow. And I'll rinse and repeat on the sides. I'll just use a 3 8 and then the 1 8 on the back. That double-sided tape is really gumming up the jigsaw here. It's kind of funny. Now that I've got everything cut, I basically have two stands here. So I'm going to separate them really fast and start making the first one. I am going to sand it really quick and just get the pencil lines off though. I do love this rigid oscillating sander. It is the most versatile tool in the shop. So I'll just split it apart with the putty knife and take off the, the back tape. The CA glue is stuck to the tape, not to the wood. That's the trick there. I'll just kind of give it a test here and I need to notch the back at 22 and a half degrees so that it lines up with the sides. Now I should have done this from the start because it is kind of quarter inch wood which is a little thin so it did blow out. So to relieve that blow out I'm actually going to come back and just put a piece of tape on that so when I run it through the second time it doesn't blow out those smaller cuts.
this is a wicked fun project and this is a great time for you guys to like subscribe and share if you're not subscribed we're doing a lot of these projects so here's a rough how it sits on the stand i think it's going to work really well it seems really stable i'm going to sand it out just a little bit so it sits a little easier in there There we go, it just folds up, folds down, pop the, pop the computer up on it, and it's good to go. And see how you can see straight through it? That's what you want. So I wanna make this thing magnetized so it sticks together so there's not a bunch of loose pieces flopping around in my computer bag. So I got some uh, refrigerator magnets, little tiny quarter inch magnets, so I'm gonna take a Forstner bit and just hog those out and some super glue and just glue them in. The super glue will hold just as well as epoxy if you let it dry properly. I'm going to take the negative side and the positive side of the magnet and mark it with a Sharpie so I know which end to go down. Otherwise, it'll have the negative pressure, negative force, magnetic force, and it'll push it up. So this is just a quick thing that I learned over time, just to mark the back side of the magnet. And it just clicks together, super strong. I am going to take it over to the edge sander and lop off the ears, the top ears of the sides so that they sit flush. Just a quick sand and then we're going to put a conditioner and a stain and a polyurethane on it. Now a pre-stain conditioner basically neutralizes the wood and lets the actual stain sit evenly across the dark and the light sides of the wood. Give it a good stir and then give it a wash. Let it dry and wipe it off. This is a preparation for the stain so it lays across it evenly. Now this is a white stain. I'm, I left my logo on this one and I think it's going to look really cool. Now that it's all stained up, I'm going to get ready to put some polyurethane on it. Make sure you give the polyurethane a good shake. Any spray paint, shake for one solid minute. And as I come across this, I'm about eight inches above and I'm going over top. I'm never stopping on the piece. I always go over, over, over. So now that one's done. My wife wanted like a pretty cool one uh, with her favorite color, so I'm going to take off the uh, Double side tape, give it a quick sand. We're not gonna put magnets in this one, we're just gonna paint it. This is one of her favorite colors. This is gonna be like a fixture piece on her desk. That was super fun. I love magnets. I mean, they are so cool. And the fact that this sticks together with these little three refrigerator magnets that are pretty strong, and you can try to shake it off and it won't come off. And then when you're ready to set up, you just pop and set up. Now I put a little bit of Flex Seal rubber on the bottom of this one so it won't slide around on the table. I thought that was a cool idea and it seemed to work. I like Flex Seal. Now my wife wanted one that was kind of pretty so this one does not have magnets. It's not made to be set, um, carried around necessarily. You could break it down and take it with you if you wanted to but I like the color. I like how much airflow gets in from every side and it's really pretty. This one looks great on our uh, farmhouse table that I'm gonna that I built and I'm gonna build another one in the future for you guys and this one's kind of like my tribute to the aviator this one will just look killer on a desk you know even if your MacBook's on it or not on it this one just will look like a piece of furniture or, or a piece of art I just think that one's really cool um, as for practicality and how I use how I use mine this is the bag that I take to work with me every day and 
you know, I showed you this is my desk. So I'll just get to either a coffee shop or to my other shop at work. I'll go ahead and grab my MacBook and I'll grab my stand. And it's together. It's not flopping around in my bag. It's just a part of it already together. Now I'll clip it off and clip it together. And make sure they're pushed down all the way. Slide my MacBook down. And I'm working. It's up higher, so I'm not looking down and putting stress on my neck. I'm looking more forward. It's allowing plenty of airflow. I edited for an hour last night and really put this thing through the paces. Didn't slow down, didn't overheat. I and mean, I kept sticking my hand underneath where it normally overheats at, and it wasn't even hot because there was so much air in there. Now, I thought it might need a fan or something, so I found this cool fan that used to be attached to a water bottle at Lowe's, and you'd like spray yourself with it in the Texas heat. And so I just cut it off of that water bottle. And so if it ever does get going too hot, I'll set that right behind it. And I normally edit with earphones so I won't hear that. And I can feel that breeze coming out the side, even the front, I can feel it all the way up to my face. So in practicality, it worked really well. Now, I, it took me 58 minutes to make the two of them all the way through paint, even adding the magnets. So, I would charge about $40 for these. So if you're gonna build these and sell them, I would be $40. Now, if someone wanted an exotic wood or if they wanted a complicated three-step stain, I would increase the price at that point. But for me, $40 would be the benchmark price. And if you watch this video, it's literally like you were hanging out with me in my shop because I'm just having fun working in my shop and I'm grateful that you guys are here to share it with me. And it's super cool. So if you watch this whole video, you were there with me the whole time. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Don't forget to check out my store. Also, my Instagram, at Stoner Erickson. I have some Easter eggs. There is some other projects in this video, in this shop right now, and I'll release the times on my Instagram. So if you get on there, you can go check and see what's coming up next. I'm loving it, guys. Having a blast. Thank you for watching. I'm Stoner Erickson, and we built something. Ta-da!